Hey everybody, welcome back to John Bond Workshop. I'm John. This is part two of my pontoon rebuild series, the last part. Thought I'd do a quick video here, show you what I did and how it turned out. You want to see how that happens? Stick around. Get comfortable. Let's go. I reinstalled all the fencing using the risers and hardware that came with my flooring kit from pontoonstuff.com. I clamped them in place and used three bolts to secure them. I went this morning and used all the scrap tubing that I had taken off the back of the boat here. And had a guy weld up a new little piece of railing here to complete my fence. This is going to give it a lot of rigidity, hold it in place a little better, and uh, a new back door here, back gate here. So, anyway, I'm going to get these cleaned up, trim coil on them, and uh, I'll get them bolted in place. So, I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. We got a new gate here. Coil. And all my rivet rivets marked out here. I'm gonna work my way all the way around and put it back to show you. And I got my little loose gate hinge here. And then you turn it on and then you know it in order to move the door. I'm gonna mount this. I got marks here where it goes. The core, so it's such a leading around. I'm gonna actually drill the top off of these. so that whenever the hinge actually works, you can lift it up and up and get out of the pocket that it sits in down here on this corner. So that's how it's going to sit right there. So this will send the boat down there. Oh, up and up. Alright guys, got it installed here. As you can see, the baggie here. All right, so today I'm setting up my console that I'm going to install the boat's new console. And I take a uh, steering helm out of the old console. I'm just going to reuse it. Nothing wrong with it. And pretty much what you do is you just trace out around this. This is the mounting bracket, and then it bolts in from the back side. So not that big a deal. Helps to have maybe two hands because it's hard to do both. So next, this helm kind of sets in this area right here. So it kind of takes up a bunch of this part over here. I think I might do the stereo over here and my switch panels. This is a switch panel I got off Amazon on this side like this. One thing I will note about the switch panel, they're all just regular toggle switches and I needed for my horn, I needed a one of these switchers, you know? So it doesn't, you know, otherwise the horn just on all the time. So you gotta have a, so anyway, I bought this and it matches these. So I'm just gonna change this out so that that will work for my horn. I'm gonna use this roto tool, this Dremel roto tool, and I'll make me a template to fit here, trace it on here, and then I'll cut this in there, same way with the stereo. I changed my mind. I was gonna put this on this side, but I don't know. It just seems better over here. So one thing I will note, I had to make this template, which didn't involve any more than a piece of cardboard. And all I did was just measure around the outside, trace it out, cut it out with a utility knife. This one here, the stereo comes mounted in this thing. And so I figured I'd just use this. This is a pretty close to the right spot, the right size hole. So that's what I'm going to use for the template. I'd love a video to tell me where exactly this console is supposed to go on this boat because I really don't know. I guess it's just where I picked to put it because I moved everything forward in this boat at least a good foot. The old location 
I couldn't even measure the old plywood or anything because it's just not the same. So, and it's a different console. The other one's kind of mounted up against this fence, and this one sits back away from it. So, anyway, I put in my T square here, my drywall T square, so I got a nice straight line, and then I measured back however far I think it needs to be, which is about an inch and a half per side, so that straightens it up. I guess next, I'm gonna take this, I think it's called a pass-through, and I'm gonna put my steering cable up through here, drill a hole for the steering cable, run it up through there, a pass-through over it, and then hook up my steering. Wish me luck. Worst part about putting in new floors and it costing so much money, you gotta drill big holes in it. I don't like that too much, so. But, you gotta do what you gotta do. Here we go. There's one. As you can see, the steering cable comes up through the bottom of the console. Got it all hooked up, ready to go. This morning I've been working on uh, getting this pedestal installed for my captain's chair. And the best way I found was to, I centered it with the console. Then I just brought it out. I kind of held my remote control up here where I thought it was gonna be and then spun the chair around to make sure it didn't interfere with anything and came up with the spot. My suggestion would be have somebody to help you put these through bolts in because this is on top of this pontoon. I have no room. It's like an inch and a half. I've got four of the six. I'm just going to wait for help to do the other two because it's just, it's tough. So anyway, I'm not going to reuse this remote control just because it's old and beat up. I have a new one on order. But I think what I'm going to do here, I've seen other videos where they just attach it to this thin metal here. And I'm sure that would be fine. I think I'll take a piece of the leftover marine plywood that I got. I'm gonna cut it to fit in this area right here and then just through bolt it top and bottom. I'm gonna paint it black and then that'll give me a good solid place to mount this thing. I just I think I would like it better. It wouldn't rattle and it wouldn't be loose. All right, real quick, I'll talk about the wiring on this thing. I put in a new wiring harness from pontoonstuff.com because mine was uh, not good. So anyway. All the colors, all the wires are designated what they go to. I got orange is the horn, so I already have my horn mounted down there. When the horn comes up into the console, it comes up, you know, all the wires come up in this bundle right here. And then it has a pigtail that you get. You attach the pigtail, show you this here. I attach my pigtail to inline fuses that I got on Amazon. So you just butt joint these in, and then you can see here, right here. On the other end of these fuses, I just clamped a connector here, and then they just slide on to whatever switch it is that you want to power that accessory. So, like my horn is over here on the end, and it's already wired in. So, pretty simple. I mean, it's a lot of work to get everything fished everywhere it needs to go. One more thing, I'm going to show you how these inline fuses work. You know, now we're good to go. Get this off here. You want just enough to fit in that. That butt clamp. So I'm going to put these on the end here. So this will connect to my accessory. Uh, I don't have a wire coming up from that wiring harness for my interior LEDs, which are coming along at some point. I'm not sure when. So that's what this will be for. This is my last for my last switch. All right. Go on. Okay, now this will plug into my, the back of my switch, my console. I'm just going to leave this hanging down there for now, but whenever I get my LEDs wired under the boat, they'll all come up and they'll tie into this connector right here. And I'm just putting 10 amp fuses in all of these. Anyway, right, there we go. See my fusible link there. So I bolted the ladder on here, reinstalled the trim here in the back. And you see I got a piece of furniture in the front kind of set up in there. It looks nice. And then there again, I'm not using this old remote, but I do have it mocked up there because the next one, the new one should be exactly like that one. You can kind of see the, the dash put together here. It's pretty nice. You can see the new helm chair. View out the back to the ladder. Installed my remote, my new remote control this morning. I did have to change this thing around from a, let's see, before it, it's a pull to throttle. 
and I get this thing here comes in a push to throttle so you actually have to change some parts around I would have made a video on it but I was watching the video to try to figure out how to do it anyway I got it installed so the cables shift throttle cables will come out of here and down through the floor through a pass-through boot which I don't have yet I'm waiting on that but I got plenty of other stuff to do here in an effort to try to keep all this stuff kind of uniform looking decided pull the number out of thin air really that's the way it works sometimes then, I count, then I'm going to mount these out seven inches from the from the bottom of the wall, seven inches to here, so they're all the same, and then just move this where it needs to go and fasten that down. So. Okay. Got the nut on on the bottom side there. Sometimes on this style of pontoon, I mean, I only got you know two inches on top of the pontoon to the bottom of the floor. If you are stuck in that situation, this has been pretty invaluable. You got it in Harbor Freight. Anyway, quarter inch drive on this side, three eighths on this side. I just put the socket that fits, which is seven sixteenths for most of these bolts. Slide it between the pontoon and the deck, hold it there, and then tighten it from the top. It seems to work pretty good. We're gonna line this railing up here with the door so that it's straight. One more thing about these railings, the old hinges had these little, and this is where the old hinges mounted, they were just regular hinges, and I went to these lift hinges, so they got holes, and this, these aren't the only holes in this old railing, holes everywhere. Anyway, a lot of them, most of them are quarter inch, 3 16 holes, so anyway, I got on Amazon the other day, and I bought these little, these little plugs. See, I got a couple of them installed right here, but they won't fit. These holes are just a little too small. They won't quite fit, so I'm gonna drill them out. And they do, uh, they do look a lot better than just having random holes everywhere in the drill. If you're working with old fence like I thought I'd show you. Tight quarters on my bolt under there, through bolt. Use a little CA glue. I'm gonna glue the washer to the nut. Just, I mean, it won't hold it very well, but it, it'll hold it enough to get it up there in place. So let me get the washer onto the nut. I'm gonna take my long tool here, put the nut in there, feed it back up right there. Now that, I gotta back that out a little bit because it's sticking down there far. Back it out just a little bit. Hopefully you can see back up in there. Put this up in place, kind of hold it up on that nut. I think I got it on there. I do hold it best I can. And about, I don't know, 20 of those. This it's tough to get in here. Well, so far I'm pretty impressed with the quality of these things. They look great. Thought I would show you. I couldn't find the hardware, so turns out, read the instructions on the backs. They are or on the bottoms, the frame of the bottoms, they're stapled in there. So anyway, you screw these studs in here, about halfway or so. And then these studs go in these corresponding slots in the back there. You see them? You get big washers. And then you just tighten down with these wing nuts. So I'm gonna get all these attached. All right, just because I'm a glutton for punishment, I decided that these little screws that came with the ladder here weren't enough to actually hold this thing long term. Falling off, which would be a catastrophe if you were in the middle of the lake and somebody's holding on to the ladder. So I'm going to put screw bolts in these two spots here, which I've already done this one, just so that I, peace of mind for me that this thing is never going anywhere. Got my screw bolt here. I'm going I'm to go ahead and do my CA glue this to my nut so that I can get my get it lined up underneath there and get screwed in. Well, as you can see, I got my battery installed in the seat bottom yesterday. You see my little boot back here that I ran my little pass through boot. I got my power cables for my outboard in here, and I got the power cables for the rest of the stuff up in here. I'm starting to power this up a little bit. I come over here, 
That's for the stereo. Stereo's still on. Today, I think, I will put through pass-through boot for the throttle shift cable. It'll go right down. You can kind of see it sitting there. It's not installed yet, but that's about where it's going to go. So we'll have a nice, easy bend on those throttle shift cables out of the back of this remote control. And once again, I'm going to drill not a hole in my floor. I just installed. This is a three-inch boot. I'm going to drill a two-and-a-half-inch hole. That would be plenty of room to get that shifted throttle cables up through there and have this remote wire down through there. So got a little screwdriver stuck through here under the fence showing me where the nearest cross beam is. I kind of want a nice easy curve down into this thing so clear me up on that. Keep it as close to the side of the boat as we can get it. A little marker, I'll mark center. Of all the holes this is the one I dread the most because it's visible right out here in the open. There we go. Put the cables up through there. I'm going to take my remote loose. And get it. There are plenty of videos on YouTube about how to install these throttle and shift cables in a Yamaha outboard remote. If you're doing this, I'd watch those. They will be more help than I can give you in this short video. But all in all, it's very doable. It just takes a little time. It could have gone worse, I guess. Uh, looks pretty good. I'm gonna just get this kind of put together here a little bit and strapped up. Secure my boot, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It looks nice. Everything seems to be working like it's supposed to be. So we'll see how it does when we get it on the water. All right, as you can see, I got the rub rails put on here. My advice to you would be get a nice rubber mallet. That is going to be your best friend in this deal. It does clean it up quite a bit. It looks much, much better. Here's my uh, rubber mallet. Like I said, I get it started on there. Had a friend holding the other end of it. It holds. And this thing has held on here. It, it squeezes around the, the decking and the cross beams here. And it fits just right between the decking and the wood decking and the crossbeam. So all this stuff here, which is pretty thick, this weave, you gotta kinda squeeze it around that. I mean, this is, it's tight. I'll just, I'll just put it that way. So you get started on there and then you, you know, tap on it around these beams and it'll go on, but it is, it's a struggle. And the corners are uh, through bolted. So those are nice and sturdy. So next thing's next, I'm gonna, wire in these LED lights, exterior LED lights for my pontoons. And the leads are really short when you get them. I mean, it's way too short. They have to wire in underneath the console. So I bought a 100-foot roll. I just, you know, spliced it in there. I'll put this on with this 3M tape. Hopefully this stuff sticks good. And I'll run this uh, up underneath my console, and then I wire it into this little box here. This is the power cord. So I'll put that on a switch on the on the dash on the console. Uh, it plugs in there, and then the pontoon lights plug into this. And I think this thing here is the remote. I did get these docking lights wired up. Once I got the rub rail on the front, this is where I wanted to mount them. I just thought it would be more attractive and easier to mount there. So I just drilled a hole in here that matched the back. There's like a little rubber grommet on the back of this thing, same size as that. Put them on here, attached it with two screws, and then it just wires right into this pontoon stuff wiring harness and then I just cleaned it up with these clips here pretty simple uh, I decided to show you just a quick bit of this this is where I spliced these back together and I just used solder connections and then shrink wrap each wire and then I put this black the bigger larger black shrink wrap over top of that and it seemed to clean it up quite a bit this is the power wire that goes to these so I'm going to put it on a fuse, fusible link here that will plug into the switch. And then this will power this. I'll have to find a ground for the other side. Plug that into this controller. 
this is for the remote. The remote senses this thing here, and then my LEDs plug into these two leads here. So leads will come back up into the console, plug into here, and I can just use my, I can turn the switch on, use my remote to work the LEDs. There you go, all installed down the side. That'll look nice when I'm on the water. Okay guys, that's going to do it for the pontoon rebuild. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider doing so. It really helped me out and I'll see you next time.